Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So, Donald Trump, he's on trial in New York City. He is not exactly allowed to be on the campaign trail most of the week, which is nothing short of blatant election interference, but he's still leading. He's leading in nearly every single state that matters in the polls. He's gaining it seems, in most recent polling nationwide, they just can't get him. And even when he's in New York City, which is not really a swing area, it's not really a swing state up in New York State, but he's still on the campaign trail. He's going out there. He's getting all this free media coverage for one, but for two, he visited the bodega in Harlem that has been crippled with crime under Joe Biden's administration. And a lot of New Yorkers are very fed up about that. And you look at Donald Trump right here. He's visiting this bodega in Harlem. You can, you can look at this clip here. This is not in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Missouri. This is New York City. We're going to play the clip here. So there you go. Donald Trump greeted with supporters in very liberal New York City with four more years chance. And some people will say, it's organized. It's a photo op. Well, obviously every single campaign appearance that candidates make is technically a photo op or it is technically something that is planned and orchestrated that doesn't take away from the fact that you have hundreds upon hundreds of people showing up in a very liberal area to see Donald Trump, and he's met with resounding support instead of resounding protest. And because people are fed up with leadership, they're fed up in New York City. This trial is helping him in New York City because you have these people that care more about political theater and getting Donald Trump, then they actually care about crime getting out of control. And they'll say, well, technically crime isn't really rising, but we know that reporting is extremely flawed. A lot of people on the ground in New York City, they're talking about crime increases. It's been that way for about, you know, four or five years by now in New York City. And it's happening under this leadership that's extremely weak on crime. That's also why you saw Lee Zeldin come extremely close to knocking off Kathy Hochul for the governorship, Lee Zeldin himself came out and he said, New York, yeah, it's actually in play for Donald Trump due to this trial. Now, do I think Trump is going to win New York? No, but do I think New York is going to be closer? Do I think it possibly could hand Donald Trump a popular vote victory, which you'd like to have? It's technically a mandate, and Republicans have only won the popular vote once, going all the way back to 1988. Yes, you would like to have it. Does it really matter? Not necessarily, but still, there's also a lot of key down-ballot races that will be taking place in New York that could determine the outcome of who's going to control the House. Donald Trump would much rather have to work with a Republican House than he'd have to you know, work with Speaker Hakeem Jeffries if he is to get back in the White House. And Lee Zeldin, there's been talks, is he going to be on the ticket for VP? Who knows what's going to happen? We get new reports all the time about the VP stuff, but still, that's besides the point. The point is that New York, it's going to be more competitive than it's been in years past. That's not to say Trump's going to win it. I don't care that he's going to do these events there while he basically can. I don't care that he's going to go to New Jersey you know, we're talking about the fact that the conventions aren't for another, you know, three months or so. After the convention, yeah, Donald Trump, he needs to focus on the main seven. You know, maybe you throw in a Minnesota or a Virginia here and there, depending on what the polling shows. But, you know, even in 2016, you look at where Trump was campaigning at this point, it was not really, you know, consolidated in these swing states. It's funny, Joe Biden spending all this money doing like 10 events in Pennsylvania a day, getting a combined like six hundred people uh, total at like dozens of events. Donald Trump gets it in deep blue New York City at one event. 
but still it's like Biden, he does his photo ops too. He goes into Wawa, nobody cares. He goes into Sheets, nobody cares. He's just angering both sides of that fight by playing both sides, it seems. Uh, in the whole Pennsylvania war, I don't really know much about it, but there's a whole Wawa versus Sheets. It's like, you know, tribalism for Pennsylvanians, I guess, to a certain extent. But the point is that Donald Trump in New York City, he is making gains. He made gains in 2020 in New York City. I mean, it's not talked about a lot, but he did. Now, the state didn't really, I guess you would say, move in his favor because of the rest of the state moving a little bit to the left. But now you're starting to see potentially a shift in New York City that's insane. Because you look at this, Donald Trump in New York City, he is polling just 27 points below Joe Biden. Donald Trump lost New York City in 2020 by nearly double that margin. And when it comes down to it, we could put this in the election shuffler. Staten Island or Richmond County, we know Donald Trump, he's running up to dictator margins there. I mean, that's no surprise. They're definitely the forgotten borough. Donald Trump represents them fairly well. And Donald Trump is a 36 percentage point lead in Richmond. So we could do that in the election shuffler there. He expands his lead. You could look at Brooklyn, Kings County, Donald Trump lost it by 55 points. Right now, it's a 39 point game here. So we can adjust this and we could make it uh, 39 points in favor of Biden or just around there. And then you go to Manhattan, Manhattan, or technically New York County, 75 points for Biden in 2020. That's down to 51. Already you're seeing a massive, massive shift in Donald Trump's column. So we could move this up to a around a 51-point uh, win for Biden there. Then you can go to the Bronx in this poll. It's at 27. That is huge. This is a very Hispanic heavy borough. It moved like 11 points to the right already in 2020. If you're going to see another shift, it, it would take a 40 point shift. Is that really going to happen? Mm, it would be really tough to see it. But if you give it a 40 point shift here, or just around there, Trump would be cracking 30. Now, I'm not saying this poll is guaranteed to hold up at the end of the day, but it is very likely Trump's going to gain. We know Lee Zeldin got around 30% in New York City. This shows Donald Trump doing better than that, depending on how, you know, margin-wise, given the uh, third parties in the mix, given the undecided voters, even if they do go home to Biden, he's still not really in that good of a position in New York City for a Democrat. So you see that. And then we have the uh, Queens borough, which is where Donald Trump grew up. This is an 11 point win for Biden right now, which that's an insane shift from what we saw before. But you look at this, you take it down all the way to a Biden plus 11 or so victory. I don't really know why it says R plus 126. I'd probably ignore that. But you're seeing Donald Trump's margin in the state of New York. It's already cut in half. It's already cut in half uh, in this poll alone. You see it cut in half. Now, it doesn't take Long Island into account where Republicans have been gaining quite a bit lately. I mean, if you want to move these two counties right by around, you know, I guess you would say... 10, 15 points, we could probably do that, um, give Republicans about a good, I guess you would say, maybe like a good 18, 19 point lead in them combined. Okay, statewide, that margin's being cut down to 10 already. If you talk about Westchester, maybe you could make some marginal gains there, Zeldin did, in Rockland. If you see some shifts here, it's possible Republicans could pick off that county. So already the state goes down to a 10-point game, which is in line with most polls that we've seen, believe it or not. Will they hold up at the end of the day? That's another question. But still, is it possible Trump makes up the ground in the rest of the state to win? It's unlikely he's able to eat into that vote margin. It would be a lot of effort for a very tough fight, and he may still fall short. 
Now, it would be a prize he'd like to have, but my main contention is if you're doing that well in New York, if you're doing that well in, you know, the part of New York that's, I guess you would say, over in this area, then you're probably doing well enough in Pennsylvania, which if you get Georgia, which it looks like you're in a very good position to get Georgia, and if you get Pennsylvania, you're the next president. It doesn't matter what happens in Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona or Nevada, both, or I guess you'd say all four of those states are leaning in Trump's column right now, according to the polling and other metrics, but still, yeah, Northeastern Pennsylvania, that is also huge. Philadelphia city proper, that is also huge. Now, is Biden going to gain a little bit here and there in the Philly suburbs? It's possible, but is he going to gain as much as he did in 2020? Probably not, and there's a decently high floor for Trump in those counties because they do have a sizable white working class population. So I think that what it shows is that if this other region is getting more competitive, if New Jersey is within 10, if New York is within even 15 points, then that is probably good news for Trump in Pennsylvania, especially eastern Pennsylvania. Some of these areas that may have moved away from him, if they rebound back and he holds his own in the rest of the state, yeah, Pennsylvania is going to go to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is probably going to win Georgia. Michigan and Wisconsin looking good. Arizona and Nevada still looking good. He's going to be the next president. But also, just based off of that shift alone, look what we were able to do to the popular vote. Uh, and that doesn't even take into account any other states, but that popular vote lead went down by one for Biden, just based off of New York alone. Wait until you get to Florida, Texas, California, you name it. There's a lot of room for growth for Donald Trump. The polls are probably accurate. I think the popular vote is a dead heat. I think the Electoral College is where Donald Trump has the advantage, which is really all that matters, and that's what's uh, going to propel him to victory. But it's good news to see New York competitive, because if it's that competitive, or even close to that, that means Republicans are going to hold the House. And that means that Donald Trump likely is going to enter office with the trifecta, and he can do whatever he needs to do to go out there and get things done come 2025. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.